So yesterday was October 30th, and you know what that means. It means PlayStation 5 accessories released. Yeah, I went ahead and picked up a few of these, notably the DualSense controller, of course, because that's been the big talk from a lot of people who managed to get hands-on with the PlayStation 5 early, is that this DualSense controller is incredible. It's really, really good. Some of the features that are packed in here with the adaptive triggers and the advanced haptic feedback and even the overall form factor of it. And I'm very interested in this controller in particular, those adaptive triggers triggers and kind of the departure even with the form factor for Sony. So I went ahead and picked up a DualSense controller and while I was there I also got the camera and the media remote just to take a look at and unbox. This is the big thing though and I think we'll do this first and then if you want to stick around and see what these are all about in an unboxing we'll do those then as well. Guys if you enjoyed this video make sure the like button helps out a ton and if you're new here hit that red subscribe button down below. I think what we're going to do is we'll do an unboxing, impressions, all of that here today, and then tomorrow, which will be Sunday, we'll go ahead and tear this controller down and get a really good look inside of it. Now, a quick look on the front here. Obviously, we have just the picture of the DualSense controller for PS5, PlayStation logo, and Sony at the top there. This, this two-tone look is still kind of controversial for a lot of people, but I think it has caught on to the point where we've sort of accepted it now and we're hoping for some really cool different options for color scheme. Obviously, they can change this white to all kinds of stuff. So here's hoping Sony gets on that sooner rather than later just to give us some extra options. Now, if we flip over to the back here, it says heighten your senses, discover a deeper, highly immersive gaming experience that brings the action to life in the palm of your hands. Going over, over several of the features here with the advanced haptic feedback, the adaptive triggers, built-in microphone, which is interesting, right? To have a microphone just built into the controller with one extra one on the back as well that will work to kind of drown out or get rid of any of the background noise as you just talk right to your controller. Should make jumping in and out of parties with friends a bit easier rather than having to grab a headset with a microphone, you just talk right to your controller, which is pretty cool. They also say signature comfort, enjoy an intuitive design featuring enhanced sticks and touchpad. Now it does say here that a USB cable is not included. Remember they did move to the USB type C. I have plenty of those now. And to be honest, a lot of us probably do since Nintendo moved to USB C for their accessories a few years ago. So I have yet to hold a dual sense at all. You're about to see my first first, first impressions, picking one of these up. And I'm excited uh, just to see what this thing's all about after hearing so many rave reviews online for it. Obviously, I don't have a PS5 to hook this up to. However, a lot of the things people were talking about were just even the comfort uh, of the controller itself. So here we go. It is, of course, in a little bag here, styrofoam bag. It looks like we just have some instructions in here, nothing really else. And then the controller itself. Wow, okay, so there's a lot to go over here with this DualSense now that I'm holding it and taking a look around it. I did grab my red DualShock 4 so that we can compare them side by side directly to the DualSense and get an idea as to what we're looking at here. Just some of the changes. Keep in mind though, the button layout is pretty much the same if we take a look at it here. We have, of course, the same symmetrical thumbsticks that we're used to. Similar D-pad, PlayStation button directly in the middle. We do have the addition of the microphone on and off switch right there. Looks like we have, uh, this is also an LED technically to tell you if it is muted or not. Speaker directly there and our large touchpad. It is larger as you can see on the dual sense, but it's also kind of shaped with more of the form factor in mind. And also keep in mind, we have this big light bar here, whereas on the dual sense itself, it's more subtle and goes around. In fact, if I press that, there we go. We got some nice blue LEDs kind of blinking around there. And I like that a lot, way more subtle than what we're used to. With, with the big light bar, that is certainly not gonna light up the room. Of course, on the left, we have our D-pad. You know what, it, it really does feel very, very similar. I Really, there's not a huge difference here between the feelings uh, of the presses around the edges. Now, keep in mind, we do have a slight change in form factor when it comes to the D-pad and the, uh, the cross circle triangle square buttons because here we have a flat surface all the way around, whereas this more conforms to the overall curvature so you can kind of see on the edge here, we have circle kind of curving down slightly to match it. And then on this side, we just have a larger, uh, I would say kind of lip here for the left D-pad. So keep that in mind as well. It, it is kind of working with the overall curve that they have set up 
for this DualSense controller. And commenting on that really quickly, we do have a very, a very pronounced curve heading down towards you. It's very aggressive. And when you first take it out of the box, it might catch off guard a little bit. Whereas this, it, it, there is still that, you know, that shot towards you with, with the overall handle, but it's just less as pronounced, I guess, because instead it kind of curves down slightly here and then it subtly goes through. This is just like falls off a cliff almost heading that way. So, you know what? I will, I will say this is set up pretty well for someone with larger hands and I do like the feel of it out of the box. I still need to use it, but at least first impressions so far holding this are pretty good. I also want to comment a little bit on these thumbsticks. It's kind of hard to show you unless we have some nice zoomed in shots on this, but there, there's some texture around the edges of this thumbstick and it's actually pretty nice. It it definitely has your thumb stick to it a lot better. It feels sticky, but it's it's not actually sticky. It's just the texture of it all the way around the edges. It's not in the center of that thumb stick. It's all around the edge. So once you press down on it, you start moving. It's very hard, it feels like anyway, for my thumbs to go slipping off of it. Now, they may get worn down over time, but the first time you take it out of the box, just try to use the thumbsticks. You'll see what I'm talking about. They definitely did their homework on uh, just the overall use of the thumbsticks and just how to make that a bit, bit more comfortable as opposed to the DualShock 4, which didn't have a very pronounced texture around kind of the lip of the thumbstick. The overall presses of the buttons, I would say the DualSense controller feels a little more mushy on any of these buttons here. So like we press cross, for example, and I hold it up to the microphone, you'll hear the DualShock 4 where it has more of like a like a tactile almost. It's also mushy, but it has more of a tactile sound to it when you press. Whereas the DualSense it has more of like that rubber membrane kind of mushy press to it, which I don't mind as much. I, I actually kind of like that because it's technically a quieter controller. That's maybe what they were going for here because it still feels very responsive just not as loud. At the top, we of course have our options and create button, which are also still tactile, very similar to what we had before on the DualShock 4. So that's pretty straightforward. They do stick out a little bit more, might be easier just to find if you're kind of just moving around the controller. These, keep in mind, were very flush with the DualShock 4. So that is, that's a good change, I would say. It seems like they just kind of took the DualShock 4, thought about some of the things that they could improve and just kind of fit it into a, I would say larger controller, but one that's more ergonomically sound. Okay, let's talk about these adaptive triggers. Because unfortunately, until this is hooked up to a PlayStation 5, as far as I can tell, they feel very similar to most other triggers. And naturally, it would be up to the developers to take advantage of the resistance and the tension that you can build up in these, in these uh, triggers, which, by the way, at this time, it just feels, it, it might have a little more tension than what's in the DualShock 4 right now. But for the most part, the travel feels very similar. It might be a little more on the DualSense in terms of how far it does travel. I do like that R1 and L1 are wider on the DualSense, however. And you can see it's actually about twice as wide. And they basically got rid of this piece of plastic that was running between R2, R1, L2, and L1, and just incorporated it into L1 and R1 on the DualSense to make it a bit wider. That's perfectly fine. Uh, they feel very responsive at the top so that it's just easier to press. I mean, you really have to think about despite them being pretty close together, you really have to think about going down to R1 and L2 here. It's not exactly like you're pressing both at once because keep in mind, this also has to kind of move on like a pivot here for it to work. Okay, I also have a bunch of controllers here for size comparisons because I figure some of you guys would be curious how it might match up to some of the controllers you have at home right now. So let's start with the obvious one, the one that everyone has right now. You're probably using it currently. <laughs> And that's the Stadia controller. Come on, we gotta give the Stadia controller some love here, right? There's probably five or six of you watching right now that actually use it still, so here we go. Right next to the Stadia controller, it is slightly larger here from top to bottom. However, the overall width from like underneath the thumbsticks to the top, pretty similar, actually. Not not too bad if you're using the Stadia controller, you've, uh, you've at least have the form factor, at least kind of the size of the DualSense here. Next, we'll put it up against the uh, original Xbox One Project Scorpio controller. And we can see they did take some of the form factor ideas from Microsoft, which is fine, but around the edges here, it's slightly more curved outwards, whereas this just basically just falls right down from here. So 
again, it just, it kind of runs into the inside of your palm a bit better on the DualSense, even than like what we have for the Xbox controller. There's just kind of more controller here to grab. I'm also gonna put it right next to the newer Xbox Series controller. And this one, it has a bit more of a subtlety to the curve on the outside compared to what we have with the Xbox One controller, but it's still nowhere near kind of just how, how much DualSense controller there is to grab onto. And then finally, here it is next to the Switch Pro controller, which for a lot of us, it's one of our favorite controllers. Like this really is one of my favorite controllers currently. The only thing that holds it back for me is the D-pad being so-so and those digital triggers. I really wish those were analog triggers, but nonetheless, this one, again, it doesn't stick out as much compared to the DualSense. So instead of like your wrist being closer here, if you use the DualSense, your wrists end up being further apart. And I think that's more of just them kind of playing around the ergonomics with Sony, trying to just get a, give us a more comfortable controller overall. And I have to say right now, these are first impressions. This is an extremely comfortable controller to hold. It's gonna come down to when we're playing for longer sessions, if it does feel maybe better on the wrist or just the overall hands. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with this controller right here. I really am. The DualSense so far, just for me holding it and checking it out is uh, it's up there on my list of controllers, but I still have to use it. What I will do real quick is how about I plug it into uh, the computer. I'll play some Mega Man with it and we'll see how the, the, the D-pad holds up. All right, so here we are in Mega Man 2 right now. I'm using the Mega Man Legacy Collection on PC. I'm playing on a Windows Surface and once I plugged it in with the USB-C to USB-A cable, it found it immediately as like a generic controller. And in Steam, I was able to set it up and now it functions perfectly fine. So I'm using the D-pad, uh, jumping around right now. I have square as fire. And you know what? It, it does, it feels, it feels pretty good. Now, the cool thing about that is if you just want to get a DualSense for PC, technically you can start using it right now. Like it just seems to work. Uh, I didn't try anything with the rumble, nothing like that because it doesn't seem to, to find any of that right now. So I can kind of play around with that, I guess, as I go. But a lot of people were wondering if this would just work on PC like immediately. And yeah, it does. Windows just, I guess, just uses like a generic driver for it, for the controller itself. So probably as we go along, people will play around with it and maybe come up with some really cool stuff with the DualSense itself, especially in games. And I almost wonder if they'd be able to use those, uh, those adaptive triggers at all in, in like PC games as we go along. But so far the D-pad feels, to be honest, like a PlayStation D-pad. Honestly, the DualShock 4's D-pad was fine. And this just feels just like it, to be honest. It really is not anything crazy. Uh, but the buttons, like I said, are a little quieter because they're more mushy and I kind of like it. They're very responsive. I mean, I'm playing Mega Man just fine with it right now, Mega Man 2, and I have no issues with it. So unfortunately, while I'd like to try out the triggers, they were detected, but uh, they just feel like regular triggers until you start having things like the, uh, the resistance put in from the motors inside, which you would probably need drivers or developers to use them in different PlayStation 5 games. But as a, uh, hey, as, as a PC controller, works fine right out of the box. Also, here's something that's kind of funny. The microphone works on Windows right now. Like I'm, I'm seeing it picking up my voice. We should do a quick recording with this microphone. The, the mute button doesn't seem to work but I bet you I could pull up Audacity or something and we can just see if it records. This is a test with the PlayStation 5 microphone. Looks like it picked it up pretty well, but what if I get real quick? This is a test with the PlayStation 5 microphone. It seems to have clipped some doing that, but it does pick it up. In fact, if I'm talking just like this while I'm playing, yeah, it should work fine. I don't know if it's picking up, I don't know if it's picking up the back one, but like, if I start moving these sticks around, you're probably gonna hear that. So hopefully the back microphone does its job as it's supposed to, where it will kind of take the noise from the controller and the room itself and just kind of drown it out and kind of get rid of it when you're talking with your friends. So I recorded that whole thing through this, no processing, and we'll see, we'll see how all of that sounds when the video's done. Okay, so now let's do 
quick unboxing of both the media remote and the camera itself. The camera, of course, you may be using for streaming from your PlayStation 5. It makes it a lot easier. And with the PlayStation 4, I do know a lot of people use the camera when it was hooked up. It was just a lot easier than having to connect it to your computer and all of this. I still prefer using something like OBS and a separate computer to stream with or record, but I understand for some people, it's just like set it up and go. So we'll go ahead and open both of these up real quick. First up, we have the media remote right here. It does come with couple of AA batteries, which is nice. And they're Sony brand, of course. And let's take a look at the media remote itself. Now they did tell us that naturally they were gonna have a couple of buttons here where you can pick different apps very easily. Netflix, YouTube, Spotify, and Disney Plus are all different buttons there. Otherwise though, it's pretty, it's a pretty solid remote. It's very plasticky, I will say that. And there's not a ton of weight to it right now. I will say I'm not particularly in love with how the backing comes off so you can put your batteries in. There's like a little tab here you have to press down, then the whole back will pop up, but it's like a latch that you're kind of letting, letting go when you press that down, and it was kind of a pain to make that work. I guess they really just didn't want any kind of door to be visible here. Now, I don't know how many people are really going to feel the need to buy this remote, unless you're someone with a really nice setup at home, and you spend a lot of time watching blue, ultra high def Blu-rays as an example with a really nice setup and you wanna have just like this nice sleek looking remote with quick access to different streaming services as well. Yes, this will of course kind of fit in with the crazy looking PlayStation 5 underneath in your entertainment center. But I think for the most part, a lot of people will probably get by just using the DualSense to kind of navigate around and pick different streaming services. But it's nice to have this kind of there and available on day one. Also, it does have a bit more weight, of course, with the batteries in there, but it is very plasticky. So kind of keep that in mind. At least it's like a matte white finish at the top here, but then around the edges, it's all glossy black plastic. I know they're trying to match up a lot of their accessories to how the PlayStation 5 itself looks, but like glossy black is just really, annoying I'll say with a lot of our uh, a lot of our accessories and even the console itself. Next up we have the camera itself that will probably be purchased quite a bit actually at launch because it does give us the ability to stream from your PlayStation 5 with a uh, video if you want to have yourself on stream and we're still not 100% sure but it may be needed for the PlayStation VR 2. Again, not 100% on that one just yet, but they did go with kind of this look, again, trying to match up to what the PlayStation 5 looks like, where it kind of is that two-toned white and black. Sort of opens up there on a hinge. It's a very sturdy hinge, I will say that. It has a lot of tension to it. Just kind of opening and closing, which is fine because you don't want to set this up somewhere and then have the weight of the webcam kind of push it down. So it is a very tight hinge right here. Now on the back, they say personalize your gameplay sharing up your game and step into the spotlight with smooth, sharp, full HD capture. Say 1080p HD capture here, background removal tools, which is really cool. We do know that they're gonna have like a whole kind of suite for editing and playing around with video. And I guess one of the tools will be that you can remove the background while you're streaming. Good, uh, good option there. And then of course a built-in stand that we see all the way around it to kind of set it up. So unfortunately, when I plug this into my Windows PC here, it doesn't find it as anything other than USB boot right now. And even trying to just give it just a generic webcam driver, it still cannot start. So I'm not sure if this is something that Sony would have to release a driver for or someone would have to design one around, but it's something we can keep an eye on in the future. For now, it does appear that it's set up just for the PS5, although that's kind of what we expect when we buy these accessories for the PlayStation 5. But still, it would have been interesting to see what it looked like. I guess let me know in the comments if uh, if people figured it out and I can come back and check it out and maybe I'll post some quality of it on over on Twitter. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for a few of the PlayStation 5 accessories I was able to find, uh, at least for now. I still wanna get the wireless charging dock for the DualSense controller. It's really cool that it supports it natively out of the box where you just kind of set it and it'll charge, so I do like that. Also, it looks like a little mini PS5. So that's the other thing I was gonna look for. I don't know if I want the headphones currently, because I already have some fairly nice headphones for when I'm playing at home, but it might be interesting to see what I guess their first party headset sounds like with their 3D audio that they're really pushing right now. But so far, first impressions of the DualSense controller are very good. I still have to actually use it with the PlayStation 5, and I really wanna get an idea as to 
what they're gonna do with these adaptive triggers, and of course, how that overall advanced haptic feedback functions in games. Even something like Astro's Playroom should give us an idea as to how it functions and what they're gonna do with it. But let me know what you guys think about these accessories. Did you pick any of these up already, like the DualSense, and give me your thoughts on it so far down below. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow where we tear this down.